So the journey started for us when we kept seeing the number of women that were coming that didn't have a place to stay. It just was heart-wrenching, to be honest with you, to watch a woman get the answer, no, we had no place to stay. We knew we had to do something. Now the honest truth is, in most cities, the ability to build another low barrier shelter in town was almost impossible. In fact, it wasn't happening anywhere. And so one of the biggest things I'll never forget was the first meeting I went to for a local zoning meeting in regards to building this building. And I'm thinking when I get up to talk about building a shelter, what's it going to be like? And that, I think, started the journey that God had for us to bring us here today. The first question that I was asked was, was it going to be big enough? It was amazing to watch something happen in our city that wasn't happening, truthfully, almost any place in the country. You know, it was so important for the community to be a part of this project, to be a part of this new shelter. You can see the glitz of Atlanta, and you can literally just drive past people, people who are in need, people who are vulnerable. And when I say vulnerable, I don't mean that they're less than, because they're not. They, in fact, just have a different circumstance, and circumstances can change. The women and children that come to us every day have one thing in common. It's kind of their last stop on the map. They've kind of tried everything else, been everywhere else. And so my favorite thing to watch and see with the women is when all of a sudden that light bulb goes off of, wait a minute, God has something more for me. And they begin to dream again. It's really exciting for me to see that we're building somewhere that is specifically for these women and children. A lot of times they've kind of gotten what's left over um, and they feel passed by. We had this incredible privilege to have Jill Pable come and help us, who's looked at it all over the country. I am convinced that design has so much to offer uh, for people who are experiencing trauma that is really unleveraged and untapped. So this was an opportunity to start to connect what's in research and what we know about environments and their possible contribution to people's experiences. Um, broad things such as what does the building look like from the outside? So these physical environment things are huge matters to how people feel about others, how people feel even about themselves and their futures. When a woman or a woman and children walk in that front door, they're gonna be welcome. They're gonna see a place that's built specifically for their needs. You're gonna know you matter. You're gonna see hope. You're gonna come in and say, somebody really does care about me. And you know, as we did that, what I saw was an unbelievable response by the community. And we moved very quickly. And you know, um, we're not that good, but God is, and he showed up. This is such a beautiful morning, and let's celebrate this and thank God for his many blessings as he not only restores those coming through these doors, but every day also restores us. And one of the most exciting things as we stand here, and really for our donors who have walked with us, a miraculous period of about 10 to 11 months, raising over $15 million. First to our foundations, your momentum, your movement by God has allowed us to stand here today. We couldn't have done it without any of you. Truthfully, we couldn't have done it without any of you. As builders, very rarely in our careers do we get to be part of a project that can do so much for so many. We were very intentional about selecting our team for the project. Uh, not only folks that are great builders, but folks that really have sort of a, 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 their heart is in it in terms of serving, right? They serve with their hearts. Really, I want to start with our friends at Nelson. To be honest, they've just been an incredible partner. And to all of the donors, this is not possible without you. And I promise you we will be incredibly good stewards with every dollar you've trusted us with. All of you have given will be impacting lives you will never meet, and their lives will be changed forever. One of the things that I love about Atlanta and I love about our work is we are right in the middle of our city. Our city doesn't push us out. They invite us in. It has been another reinforcement to me of the heart and generosity that makes Atlanta so special. And people have said yes from their hearts and they really believe in what we're trying to do. 
I personally hope that Restoration House is a beacon for the community to come and volunteer. When you look at another person who has practically lost hope, who has been through things that you can't possibly imagine, and you can look into their eyes and tell them that they have a future, that they have value and worth in this world because Jesus loves them, and you see the work that the Atlanta Mission does, not just to put a Band-Aid over homelessness. You see the transformation that comes into these people when they learn that their past doesn't have to be their future. And it's interesting in this time of COVID-19, in this time of pandemic, that need has been exacerbated. That need is, is really on the front page. I believe that we may actually be seeing a different population coming to our doors after COVID of people who may have had a job and been able to care for themselves, but were just one paycheck away from being homeless. These are very uncertain times. We seem to know less than what we do know in terms of going forward. But one thing we do know is that the idea of trauma and stress is rampant right now. People are still homeless. Women and children are still suffering. And when they see that the building is still being built, it shows them that their hope is still a possibility, that their future changing is still gonna happen. And that's what life is. There's hope on the other side of adversity. And the amazing thing of the Restoration House, it's really designed with COVID in mind. And so it actually, heaven forbid, if we face another issue, it'll be the facility best prepared to deal with it. And if in fact we're gonna have that statement and, and say that we care, then we have to invest in projects like this. Yeah, you know, when I think of my hope for the Restoration House, um, it's the life of a woman or a child that's changed forever because they walk through those doors. I believe our city will take notice and that they will hear of these stories and it will make more people want to give and support what we're doing. What you're investing is going to be something so amazing for um, not only so many people, but for um, the city. My hope for Restoration House is that the presence of God would be so strong in that place, that people's lives would be healed, that families would be restored, and that both the lives of the community as well as the clients and the staff are all changed. And finally, I would just really ask you to pray for the women and kids that will be coming. God knows who they are. And I pray he'd protect them between now and then until our doors are open. There isn't an option not to build this. We have to build it.